So, up to this point, all you've been seeing is potential, right? You watch all these silo videos, you watch all this kind of stuff about what people are going to do. Well, upstairs, I already did. I took 12,000 pounds of steel, all those walls, kitchen, bathroom, sinks, everything you can imagine, all the stuff you saw, water tanks, water heaters, air conditioning systems, everything that filled that top level, and I pulled it all out of here. Because remember when I told you that the previous owner sucked in moisture? It was damp up there, and the rust was really bad, and there's an insulation in those walls that I knew I would never get the smell out. So in order to make this place habitable, I knew that those walls had to go. And I also did a few other things, so one up. So this is the first level that I completed. I know it's a bit eccentric. The floor is a little colorful. But I like it. That's what I wanted. This is part of my game. Get out of the cone of echo. So I don't know if you guys can edit this part. So one thing that was a cool effect down here is because you're in a perfect dome, you're basically in a large speaker. So there's some really cool acoustic fun over here. For example, if you're standing over there and you talk to somebody in there, they will turn their head this way because it will sound like your voice is not coming from you but coming from an entirely different direction. We have a lot of fun up here. I have 40 Boy Scouts with sleeping bags watching war games this whole half of the ceiling was projected with a projector. This whole thing made a big, gigantic, beautiful movie studio. And all these little kids were here eating popcorn in their sleeping bags watching the movie. It was a lot of fun. So this room was fairly large, about 34 feet across. Um, but anyway, the acoustics, <clears throat> if you stand in the exact center of this room, you get this really cool acoustic thing. Your voice thumps right through your chest. It's an amazing experience. So, um, but to be honest, you know how everybody sounds good when you sing in the shower? <laughs> You'll sound really good if you sing here with a beer or two. <laughs> they don't need to hear, yeah, a beer or two. Did your site have um, graffiti under the edge? Yeah, my graffiti was right over here. This is the kitchen, right here. Yep. <clears throat> and so what was really fascinating that I found was that I found when I laid down, Under this lead, <laughs> under this bed right here. I rang my bell, sorry. We have to edit that out. I rang the doorbell. So under this bed right here, this has been painted. So you can't see anything. Okay. But on a lot of the sites. But all this here was covered with graffiti and very high quality graffiti. And so I called the museum and they said that it was actually a tradition at every Titan site. Different crews would visit, they signed underneath this area here. In fact, some of the uh, sites had movie stars and presidential people and other things that, um, that all signed them under these. So different sites have different historic figures in there. So I photographed it. Now it's all, I had to seal it and paint it and everything. But I photographed it very, very exhaustively in high-res photographs and sent them all to the museum. And the curator there was trying to look up um, a, a crewman whose names they found. And That'd be cool. They were able to assemble crews by, because um, crews would list everybody on the crew. Right. But so there was also a lot of anti-four-letter words about their commanders or <laughs> <laughs> about different officers. So I kind of got the feeling that maybe the commanding officers didn't look under there because there was a lot of... Uh, what you might expect, an angry crewman. No. <laughs> <laughs> People that are stuck in a silo for 24 hours, Correct. for four years, yeah. So these right here are interesting. You've probably heard a lot about the bird cage, those big massive springs.
springs that are down in the, in the levels below us. Well, they're attached right here. <clears throat> Don't have them painted down there, remember? Yep. But one of the interesting effects that you might think of, and I realized, is that you had to have a dampening sideways control. So these dampers prevented the birdcage from moving sideways when they shake as well. So not only did the springs handle up and down, but they also handled sideways. Well, it's what? Uh, access portal. Okay. Access portal. Just walk away out. Oh, it's the uh, acoustic. So this is where. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. And now, introducing <laughs> Nick, the silo owner. <laughs> but the weirdest part is, is you hear a little bit of an echo, but if you were standing around here, it's thundering. Just, just that couple feet is just yep. it's thundering. come down here and play a couple of gigs and they love the acoustics because you can't electronically reproduce this kind of a perfect sound. So uh, I, got, I got one musician friend uh, especially that just loves coming up here and sitting with his guitar and just jamming. And uh, he doesn't even record very often, he just likes to do it. But this section right here with a massive uh, air conditioning pipe that came out. Um, I have a steel plate downstairs cut that I will weld this in and finish carpeting it across because otherwise it's wasted space. And then uh, finishing up this area here, we got to sand the rails. And for safety, for all of you uh, Karens out there, yes, I need to put a rail right along that edge right there, I promise. Yeah, so originally that was the outside wall uh, right here was the base of the wall that went to the bedroom. So originally there was no rail there. And on both of our sites, we're going to have to add one. Yeah, no, they didn't cut the little one. Yeah, these things are adjustable. I have the schematics somewhere to uh, adjust them. Because actually from there to there, I'm actually a slight tilt on one direction. Yep. So anything else you want to see down here? Oh, here's this. This is the air intake. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. So this for Atomic Underground is going to be our February project. This air intake assembly unbolts at the wall, and GT has a, a video of that. Um, the whole thing, this whole section comes off, and then we basically use a gear puller uh, that we are going to build to pull the blast valve itself out of the wall. It does have hydraulics, so you might be able to push the plunger in or out of no, hydraulics first. It's, Long, long past that for ours. So right now, this hole on the bottom um, is where we have a small leak. That's the only leak we have in the launch control center. Uh, mine's dry. So my plan here is, is I have a, um, believe it or not, a commercial shop vac air filter. Fits on here perfectly. And I've got a four inch fan to put in the center of it with the, with the uh, shop vac filter on it. So I'll uh, eventually just put that as permanently filtered uh, air intake when I close up the uh, escape shaft. So while we're right here, um, oh, so another one of these. Sorry. Oh yeah. So how long ago did you buy this site? I bought the site three years ago. Um, made a lot of progress on some things. It kind of goes in spurts. Um, part of my reason for that is is uh, as you know by public record, I paid more for this site than anybody else in history has ever paid for a missile site. But I have a functioning business on the surface. It's a nursery. We move those massive cactus, those gigantic saguaros. We have huge trucks, huge rigs, lots of crews, lots of stuff going on around here. So I don't always have all times of the year where I can come down here and work because sometimes of the year 
uh, we're working 80 hours a week in the nursery. Um, so when I have downtime, when I get a couple months at a time, I start projects and I do it at Vincent's first. And uh, if you want to answer the question, um, what is your uh, end goal for the site? We are building a house on the surface. This is nothing more than my man cave. All right. I literally am looking to put a bunch of gigantic screen televisions and a chair in the middle of the room with a joystick, and I can watch whatever football game I want and have a bar <laughs> over here. If I can afford it someday, I'll have somebody <laughs> tending it for me. Um, are these, is the uh, markings on the floors, these that's original all original markings. markings? These are original markings. So when they were cutting the plates for the floor, they had a marking of where every one of them went? Yep, it was covered with a carpet. Yep, and um, mine, mine so still has So this has been preserved for, uh, what, over 60 years? Over 60 years now, or, yeah. Close. Oh, right at 60. Well, they started in 61, and that was the year I was born. So yeah, I think they started my site in 62. Yeah, they broke ground in most of them in November, December of 61, and they were all completed by 63. That's amazing. I know, we have a bridge over the freeway here locally. It took three years to build this stupid bridge, and I'm thinking, do you have any idea what they accomplished here in 18 months? And we can't get a bridge over a freeway nowadays. So guys, this is why we scrap out the cableways. Um, where, where Doug is standing, it wouldn't, right now our cableway is not even as wide as he can reach with his arms. It's about like that. So the amount of wasted space, and again, as he said with the conduits on the ceiling, we can't get back in here and yeah. paint any of this. We can't remove any of the old paint. You can't sandblast it. You can't, can't do anything. anything until we remove all that. And those uh, things hang, hung from the springs that were right here on the ceiling. These were, oh, in my case, these were, these were the uh, I-beams right here, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So whoever cut mine, you know, I need to go back and clean those up. Yep. So I hope when they do yours, they do a better job. But see, I still have stuff like this, and I still, I'm still cleaning stuff up. There's no end to it. But at least I can lock my doors. <laughs> so this room is my tool room right now basically because it's closest to the exit. I don't know if you guys notice I have a beer fridge in the other room so it's a little bit of a man cave I have a beer fridge in there. So this right here is an interesting thing. Um, for this summer, as soon as it gets hot again, this is a uh, hanging clear freezer door curtain like you find in a restaurant. So this will allow me, when I open the big door, I'm not going to let my cool air out. So I will have one of those clear plastic doors like back when you were 16 years old and you worked at the local burger shop and you go into the refrigerator, the walk-in the walk-in freezer. So um, this will allow us to just push through the plastic and keep the cold air in here let the hot air stay out here. I haven't installed that yet, but we'll have that up before it gets warm. Okay, and before we head out into the darkness here, I know the light will come on when you do, but uh, for my viewers, uh, what is the name of your YouTube channel? Arizona Titan 2. All right, and in the future, uh, we are going to look forward to uh, Doug posting uh, videos. I promise, I promise I'll start posting. <laughs> He's going to post videos of the progress on this site, and uh, as we've already mentioned, this is one of the Arizona sites. So, again, motion sensors. Watch them not come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you. Clap on. Alright, this one's, there we go. And the entrance portal. Oh, oh the moon, look at that. Where'd you see it? Oh, right in the corner there. Wow. Kind of cool. <laughs> Those are the kind of things I love. Man. Yeah. We like, have come in and out of here. This time of year when I exit the, the silo at night, Orion is right up there. And it's just like, I just love going up to the stars because I have no city lights right above me. And it's just spectacular. So yes, I need to put stairs. And uh, you have an amazing set of stairs. I'm a little bit jealous, but I'm holding At least on. you can see where your original ones were. I can't even see that. Yeah. My, um, Actually, mine probably do cover up the original ones. That's why I can't see them. Right. In my case, 
I, I've held off building stairs because I want to make them steel. I want everything. Yes, I want, so I do I. Nothing but I beams, I beams and steel steps. So I haven't started building stairs yet. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, joining Doug and I out here in Arizona. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Why he wants to build a house here. One <laughs> that is an amazing sunset. Looks like that every night or better. I don't think anything's going to show up on the video here, but we'll try. Using a one-way actuator on here.